welcome back. Just going to make a short video today looking at the access to Billy's Lake and how to get from it to it from Weecock Park. As you see, just standing by a car park, easy access as the path runs all the way along the north edge of Weecock Park. You can't go any further north because you end up in the fields. So as I pan around, you can see the path starts at this entrance next to the flats which is right in the north west edge of Weecock Park you can't go any further west from here because you meet the fences blocking off Weecock Park from the rest of the area stop any of the louts getting out another car park just over there the flats just the other side of it and we can see the path runs all the way along to the east. As I pan back around to the north, one of the many links that allow us to walk into the fields directly from Weecock Park. So over to the east is where they're going to build the Wee Woodcroft Farm housing estate. It's about half a mile to the east. You can see one of the farms that you can walk to from a bridal way from Weecock Park with the barns and the horses in the field as I pan around following the pylon lines through the field which like unlike many of them in the area is full of crop most of them are used for pasture land for the horses we can see a pretty big pathway into the fields run along adjacent to it. Unlike many farmers fields this one has a huge pathway at the edge of the field. He even got his own bushes growing in the field now where he doesn't bother ploughing this side of the field. And this is the easiest way to access Billy's Lake from Weecock Park. Weecock Farm. Now I'm just about to reach the boundary of Weecock Farm Estates and we can see now if we reach the line of houses where everybody has their fences at the back of the garden. Some of the access gates allow them to access this area, walk with their dogs and the quality of the houses suddenly improves. Most of them detached or semi-detached. The area is used by a lot of people walking their dogs. During winter it gets a bit muddy. So you're best to bring your wellies. But as soon as the spring warmth hits we're suddenly into a time where everything dries up. And you can see in here an example of the farmer allowing everybody to walk down. You just saw one of the local residents go back into the garden after walking their dog. The ground below looks pretty solid, but it's just mud. And as soon as the rains come down, it gets churned up a bit and can turn into quite a quagmire. Most of the gardens have bushes, trees on their fence line as well, to create an extra boundary, giving them a little bit of privacy from anybody that might be walking past. At an average pace, it only takes about five to ten minutes to walk from Weecock Park to Weecock Farm Housing Estate into the Billy's Lake area. The lake itself has always been there, but a lot of the time 
it was blocked up, covered in weeds. And there was nothing to see there. A few of the locals used to go down and hang out there at night time. Bit of privacy. Get bitten by the mosquitoes. The other thing to be aware of is the amount of dog poo that can collect up on the paths at times. As it's in the farmland, nobody really cares where the dog poo's on here. There's the occasional people who pick it up, but most people just leave it wherever the dog does it. And often that's on the path. Now we just came coming to the boundary which is the edge of the lake. It's one of the drains. Probably allows them to dump all the excess water into the lake. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> And looking down there, you might just be able to make out a bit of marshland. Some of the reeds in there. If I pan through the trees, you might be able to see the glittering reflection on the surface of the lake. Now this is actually the west side of the lake, which is owned privately, compared to where we're going to go around and walk to the east side of the lake which although you need fishing permits if you want to fish there's a better view of it now something that for many years would not be seen as the whole area was covered in dead decayed trees completely blocked up there was nothing to see at all a bit of water in there but it's hard to understand that there was even a lake here at all. Now what they have done for many people that enjoy coming down here, John Welford and his team, in one of their projects built this, oh, it looks like what it's become a, a dog poo storage area where people just leave their dog poo bags. Lovely. But know what it's really meant for is the bird watch because as we all know if you're in an area where birds can see you you never see any of them so you need a bird watch in order to allow you to see the birds without scaring them away and you can see the immediate effect now that I'm covered in this hide the area returns to its natural habitat and there's birds everywhere. Already we can see looking down at the lake there's a bit of algae growing on it. It's caused because the lake is standing water. There's no fresh river running through here unless the rains build up enough that allows it to drain from the other end it'll be standing and over time the algae just grows and grows and grows on it it's become so bad at times that they need to get down and clean it out John and his team come down here regularly normally on a Wednesday and do little different projects as you're going to see as we go around, they've created paths, they've created stairs, they've put in piers, they've put in fishing posts, they cut down trees, they clear back the vegetation, and of course they dredge and clean out the lake when it's needed. Swimming across the lake we can see a coot. You may just be able to make out the far end some swans. It's a 
first time I've seen swans down here in all the time I've been. And as I mentioned earlier, the other side of the lake is owned privately, another fishing company, and they've surrounded it with a massive fence to stop anybody getting in there. And that's what can be made out at the edge, what you would assume would be the edge of the lake, is this massive fence, which has also got black cloth on it as well. Okay, we'll continue around, leave the dog poo bag shelter, and we get to a part of the path where they put in a few flagstones, which makes it easier to walk along. But when it gets to the time of year, it's all wet and rainy, just rubble, paving stones, bricks, anything they could find, bits of concrete, to build up the path, to allow it to become a little bit better to walk along. This is where it splits. You can see some of the different trees that have been cut down. And here's one of the information posts that have been set up to allow people walking along the area to see what's going on. Stop the spread. Are you unknowingly spreading invasive species on your water sports equipment and clothing? Check clean and dry. Check your equipment and clothing for organisms, particularly in the area that are damp or hard to inspect. Clean and wash all equipment and footwear thoroughly. If you do come across any organisms, leave them at the water body where you found them. Dry all equipment and clothing. Some species can live for many days in moist conditions. The owls, which some people think come out and clear up all the rubbish or on strike at present, please take your litter home. As in all areas, People get used to dumping their rubbish, thinking that somebody else will clean it up. But it needs to be picked up by somebody. And we've got a sign for the fish rod fishing rule licensing. Please fish legally. Check you've got your license. They expire on the 31st of March 2017. So if you haven't got your new fishing rod license yet, you better renew it before you get caught. Operation Scrambler Scrambler Watch Blighted by motorbike nuisance Afraid to walk along the path or fields It is illegal and is an offence So if you see it Immediately report the problem Call 101 or 0845 045 4545 Get a make of the model registration number and the vehicle if possible Names and addresses of riders and offenders make statements without those no action can be taken so as long as you have to make a statement if you see somebody riding their motorbike and you can get all the details you can get it stopped well, there's several paths that run around some of them blocked by fallen trees which you have to scramble over but most are cleared i'm going to head down one of the paths then create that logs Otherwise, this would have been a very steep climb into one of the areas that's used for the fishing. We can see here one of the bins, completely full at the moment. Stansted Park Garden Centre. Oh, makes me wonder where this bin came from. It's been a while since it's been emptied. It's got benches for sitting on. We're at the Algae end. The wind blows from that direction down to this end, blowing all the algae down to here. A few bits of litter, notably cans of beer, as people tend to come down here and drink. A bit of privacy. Wear sturdy footwear if you come down this direction. Although it's been built up and there's nice paths now, it's still a lot of tree roots around, areas where you can trip over, fall in the water quite easily if you're not taking care. 
and as we can see some of it's still very muddy and slippy so do take care if you come down this way we've got one of the other stairs carved out of the hillside made from the wooden blocks it's another fishing post Reed bank forming. And we're now into the oh, some of the walkways come off there. Another trip hazard you gotta be careful of. You can see some people have built walkways out into the middle of the lake. The lake is behind us in the trees and this shows an example of what the lake used to be like. It was covered in fallen down trees, broken, mouldy, covered in moss. You could hardly see any of the water and all this had been cleared to create an area that looks more like this. It's only a few feet deep there's some deeper spots in areas. And this is the end of the fishing area at this side. used by a few people but as you can see Saturday it's still early it's only about 11 o'clock in the morning you know the Sun is shining there's a few clouds in the sky so we're not seeing many people here there's bird houses being put into the area and door mice houses although you can scramble across the top of the banks they prefer you not to and if you follow the paths around We arrive in an area that's been pretty well cleared because most of it before was just like this covered in brambles, a few ferns sticking in here and there, the trees that poked up through the brambles, far, small, looks like a murder scene. Uh, we can see there are massive trees falling down. They put the tape around to stop people going in there, having some fun climbing up and falling down. And this shows you one of the examples of what's happened in the area. John and his team come in, clear it out, coppice the trees, cut off the extra boughs that are not needed. Great little nature areas, allowing some things to live here. Put in shelters. You can see what would have been a birdhouse. Looks like it's been gnawed open a bit. Maybe a squirrel lives in there. Well, there's a wasp hanging around, looking like it wants to go in there at the moment. And then we've got stacks of piles of wood. And as anybody knows, timber like this, great resource for living creatures, gives them a bit of shelter, protection from anything wants to eat them, allows them to live safely underneath. As it continues along the sides of the houses, we can see a lot of the area is not being cleaned up. Here's an example of one of the trees branches low down have been cut off allowing people to walk along without being poked in the eye most of them are actually dead timber this low down if we look up into the canopy you can see the green leaves above 
but these branches here, here and here, they're all dead. Just a dead branch, easily snaps. Rotten woods. There's even one branch just stuck up there, falling down through the branches. Okay, we're in the northern edge. Just along there is more of the woodlands. Heading off to the left is a path that heads down to the car park that you can access. Another example of the dog poo just left lying around on the pass. And we have here another access down into the fishing grounds. Nice fence being put up, stop people accidentally falling down the bank. Another bench being created to allow people to sit up here and have a look over the lake. Okay, we head down the stairs, another one cut deep into the bank, made out of logs. One of the trees that snapped over. Quite recent. The month being April now. Must have happened a couple of months ago in the strong winds. Oh, we have an example of people not caring where they dump their rubbish as long as it's near the bin. Even if the bin is full, that's where it's going to go. Billy's Lakes rules for anglers help us protect, conserve and develop the area for the community. All anglers must have a current environment see Environment Agency Rod License. Please take all rubbish away with you or place it in the bins. No camping, overnight bivvies, fires or barbecues. And as the rules go on. Oh, here come the swans, they must have heard me chatting away to myself. You think I've got some food, do you? Not today. We have a close-up of the swan. Hello swan, how are you today? I have no idea which ones are the male and which ones are female, as I assume they're a pair. Your head's looking a bit dirty today. earlier you don't often see swans in this bit of lake more evidence of the fence hello didn't think everybody was fishing here today <laughs> it's yeah. very quiet well it's been quite good all day sorry I've got, I've got a rig on the floor there yes um, yeah it was all good until my nap uh, my net snapped. Oh. I had a rather large fish out. You got away in the broken net, did he? Yeah. Well, no, actually, I, I managed to get him. I landed him. But oh, you got photo evidence? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I probably say he's in the region about 20 to 30. Yeah, that's how big he was. Yeah. But I've just been plagued by these two, so I'm going to go home, I think. How long have you been down here? A couple of hours? Just about five o'clock this morning. Difficult to get. Got a picture of one. Oh, I can see it. Yeah. Oh, that's a big one. Is it still catch and release here, is it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Barbless hook. Cool. That was when I caught the first thing from the first light. Probably about half the size and weight. 
It's not bad. I make some YouTube videos, put them up. It's not used I by would, many people here, is it? I, I would do, but no. No, you're right, it's not, but... <laughs> yeah, they get caught up in that, weren't they? Yeah. Unfortunately, I've had quite a good day's fishing up until this point where these two just won't leave me alone now. <laughs> so I think it's about time I'll just leave them to it and, and pack my gear up. Yeah, they want the food. Yeah. Can't argue, it's their environment. It's the first time I've seen swans down here. They came in early this morning, actually. Um, just, just after first light, about half five, I both flew in and they've been, well, only what I can imagine is being building a nest over in the reef in the back there. Yeah, well, I'm not using that massive thing in the middle then. <laughs> I thought they would, but obviously they prefer it where it's all natural. Yeah, a bit more privacy. That's it, looks like a nice day, a bit cloudy. This is a bit early yet, as in the season. Uh, yeah. When it warms off a bit, there'll be more people down this way. Exactly, there's no spots to fish from when it gets too busy. I think John, the guy who does it all, might be moving on somewhere else. They're advertising, looking for somebody to look after the area. Okay, yeah, I've seen obviously all the bits and pieces around about obviously taking all the bits over and doing everything. It's customary, really, but even last night when I turned up, um, there was a group of lads sat at the top, and then I come down here, and then I see all the rubbish that was all left and everywhere, and everything. It's just, it's not nice. Yeah, the bins are overflowing both sides at the moment. John might have moved on somewhere else already, or something's happened to him, unfortunately. It's a shame if so, because uh, the work they put in down there is... I don't see why more people don't come down and use it for the space that it's there for. Certainly most people I talk about, they don't know about this place. Yeah, it's amazing how many fishing people often see people in Weekart walking past with their rods heading down this way. As you say, there's hardly anybody uses it. Nah. Every time I've been down here over the last few months there's been nobody here, but then again it has been winter, so... Yeah, you'll probably start to see more and more people. I think the couple that were here this morning, I don't think they fish much. <laughs> no, they're doing like tents and everything like that. But probably bivvying overnight or something? I think so, they do. But no, I couldn't really see till the morning, by then they packed up anyway. <laughs> Exactly. Got to hobbies in what I can. Oh, do you ride all the way along from Weekoff or something? No, 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 I live in Cotton. Oh, you come all the way up here? Yeah, I come all the way up here. Right. Well, like I said, I, I knew about this lake a few years ago. When I came up here, it was quite dirty. It wasn't really maintained well. Yeah, same here. I used to bring my kids to walk along the path. There used to be a park where they put the car park at the other end. Yeah. So when we're just looking for somewhere to go, we go down there and place this from Weecock and as you say it was just covered in undergrowth. All the trees were collapsed, clogging it all up. Yeah. I guess for most people there's nothing here to do unless you come for fishing. Not just a, a short walk. Yeah, I think not a lot of people do that anymore. And if people fish they tend to go like the one over the back there, they go to somewhere where they can pay a day ticket. And they're almost guaranteed what they're fishing really. What I like about here is, there isn't actually a guarantee, I don't know what's in this lake. Have you been over the other side as well? Yeah, I've been the other side. I might do. Yeah, I've been over the other side. 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 Yeah, I've been over
Sounds like they were doing, they're doing quite a lot of work to it this morning. <laughs> the was out and everything, so yeah, obviously it must be a, a quite a nice lake. Can't see it from here though. Yeah, they've always had that fence up. Leave you to it. Yeah. Have a good day. You Thank you. And you may have noticed that most of the paths leading down to Lake uh, Stairs except for this end where they have disabled access into the fishing area so a nice sloping path leads all the way down to the edge of the lake up into another area that John and his team have cleared sometimes the local schools come down here and help out build camps there's a storage locker it's used for tools and equipment to keep the area clean and tidy and as you can see unlike most of the places where it's brambles this area has been fairly well cleared out to allow easy access we've got some pallets full of sticks and blocks allowing a home to be created for little bugs to live in. All the lower branches of the trees have been cut out to stop people getting poked in the eye. As you continue around, I'll come back to the sign at the top leading into Billy's Lake. We put a new bird table in there mason bee these bees are known as masonry bees or mortar bees because they like to nest in crevices or holes in masonry so it's a bee's nest as well as a bird table as we come round there's a sign for Billy's Lake Lots of information on there, telling you how dangerous it is for the wildlife when you're littering and mistreating them. As we turn around, following the route of the pylon, there's the path that leads down to the fields that goes to the car park allows people with cars to come and park and get easy access into the field. They're currently looking for planning permission to put this path in through the field to make it better to stop it getting all clogged up and dirty and muddy during the winter months. Okay, thanks for watching the video. I'm going to end it there, walk back to Weacock Park. If you like what you see, if you want to know more, put a comment down below and I'll answer as soon as I can. Thank you.